Hello, my name is Dr. Omende, and in this lecture series, let's discuss the mediastinum. So, um, the mediastinum is the space between the two um, pleural um, cavities that contain that contain the lungs. Yeah. So, um, you have the pleural cavity on the right and the pleural cavity on the left which contains a lung, so the space in between the two pleural sacs is what we are calling the mediastinum. So the mediastinum is usually divided into three, into two parts. So we have superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum. This is between the sternal angle of Louis anteriorly and the uh, junction between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebra. Remember, the boundaries of the thoracic cage are superiorly from the upper border of the manubrium to the superior border of the T1 vertebra. Then posteriorly you have T1 vertebra to T12 vertebra. Anteriorly you have the sternum and inferiorly you have the, the diaphragm. So that's the thoracic cavity. Then the thoracic cavity is divided into two pleural sacs on the right and the left and the mediastinum at the center. So this mediastinum is divided into superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum by a line passing through the sternal angle of Louis, which is at the manubrosternal angle, to bisect the mediastinum into two. Posteriorly, it passes through the junction between the fourth and the fifth vertebra. So that's your superior mediastinum, and that's the inferior mediastinum. Inferior mediastinum is divided into three. You have the anterior mediastinum, that is anterior to the pericardium, the middle mediastinum, which is the pericardium and its content, which is the heart, and then posterior mediastinum, which is a section of the inferior mediastinum, that is posterior to the pericardium. So the boundaries of the anterior mediastinum include the sternal line bisecting sternal angle of Louis to T5 vertebra, anterior border of the pericardium, the thoracic diaphragm below, and the body of the sternum anteriorly. Then the middle mediastinum, the boundaries are the pericardium, inferiorly thoracic diaphragm, and superiorly the line dividing the mediastinum into two. Then the boundaries of the Posterior mediastinum include the line from sternal angle to T4 T5 junction, then the vertebral body of T5 to T12, inferiorly by the thoracic diaphragm and anteriorly by the posterior border of the pericardium. So, those are the boundaries of the posterior mediastinum. So, the mediastinum is divided by horizontal plane from the sternal angle of the way to lower border of both thoracic vertebra. So, you divide it into superior mediastinum that's above that plane and inferior mediastinum below the plane. Inferior mediastinum is divided into anterior mediastinum in front of the pericardium, middle mediastinum containing the heart and the pericardium, and posterior mediastinum located behind the pericardium. The superior mediastinum, what are the boundaries? Anteriorly by the manubrium sternum, posteriorly by the upper four thoracic vertebra, and superiorly by the plane of thoracic inlet. The thoracic inlet is bordered by the manubrium sternum anteriorly, the first rib, internal borders of the first rib and posteriorly the first thoracic vertebra. Inferiorly, the superior mediastinum is demarcated by the horizontal plane for sternal angle of Louis to T4 T5 junction. And on each side, the superior mediastinum is bordered by the pleura. So those are the boundaries of the superior mediastinum. So as you can see, this is the thoracic inlet from the first rib to the manubrium. So these are the contents of the superior mediastinum at this level, okay? So you can appreciate the aorta, the arc of the aorta and its branches. You can appreciate the left common carotid, the brachiocephalic trunk with right common carotid and right subclavian. This is the brachiocephalic vein, the right and the left joining to form the superior vena cava. So, the superior mediastinum, again, you have parts of the thymus gland, okay? Again, that the brachiocephalic veins forming superior vena cava. So, the contents of the superior mediastinum include the esophagus. So, if you go back to the first image, you'll be able to appreciate the esophagus and the, and the trachea, okay? So, this is still the superior mediastinum. This is the esophagus. This is the trachea bifurcating later at the sternal angle of Louis. So this portion here is your superior mediastinum before the bifurcation. So you have trachea, esophagus, and the recurrent laryngeal nerve in between. Okay. 
So what are the contents of the superior mediastinum? So we have the esophagus, the trachea, and its three branches, including the brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, and left subclavian artery in that order. Then you also have the right and left brachiocephalic veins that join to form the superior vena cava and the thymus gland. So those are the contents of the superior mediastinum. Other contents include nerves such as right and left vagus nerve, the right and left phrenic nerve, right and left sympathetic trunk, as well as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. We also have lymphatic structures in the superior mediastinum, and these include the thoracic duct and lymph nodes. So if you're to go back to the images, try and identify some um, nerves in the superior mediastinum. So we have recurrent laryngeal, as you can see here, recurrent laryngeal is between the trachea and the esophagus, but you can still appreciate the vagus nerve here and the phrenic nerve. So they are components or contents of the superior mediastinum. So vagus nerve, recurrent laryngeal nerve, phrenic nerve, sympathetic trunks, then you also have thoracic duct and lymph nodes as contents of the superior mediastinum. Anteriorly is the pericardium and part of the diaphragm. Posteriorly, you have the lower eight thoracic vertebra from T5 to T12. Superiorly is the horizontal plane from sternal angle of Louis to T4, T5 junction. Inferiorly is the diaphragm, while on each side you have the pleura. Remember the pleura is, uh, forms the lateral boundaries of the mediastinum. So that's your posterior mediastinum. You can appreciate um, the contents. So you have your uh, esophagus, the thoracic esophagus, you have the thoracic part of the aorta, you have the thoracic duct, okay, and the azygous vein, as well as the sympathetic trunk. So those are the contents of the posterior mediastinum displayed there in that image. So you can appreciate again, this is your thoracic aorta, then this is your thoracic duct, your azygous vein is here, those are the contents of the posterior mediastinum. The sympathetic trunk are usually paravertebral, parallel to the vertebra, okay? Then you can appreciate the thoracic aorta is first on the left side of the esophagus, then goes to be posterior and slightly to the left. Then the thoracic esophagus usually has anterior and posterior vagal trunks, anterior and posterior to it. And from the aorta, you have your thoracic duct, azygous vein, before you get to the sympathetic trunk. So that's the arrangement of the structures in the posterior mediastinum. Again, the thoracic aorta there, that's the esophagus. And your thoracic duct, you can appreciate it there. So what are the contents of the posterior mediastinum? Thoracic aorta, esophagus with the vagal trunks, then thoracic duct, azygous vein, and the sympathetic trunks. So you have the esophagus, which is the most anterior structure. Thoracic duct is to the right of the esophagus. Then you have the right and left vagus forming anterior and posterior trunks around the esophagus. You have descending aorta, azygous and hemiazygous vein. Azygous is usually on the right, hemiazygous is on the left, and then right and left sympathetic trunks, which are paravertebral on both sides. You also have lymph nodes in the posterior mediastinum. So those are the contents. The middle mediastinum contains the pericardium and the heart, and other contents include the ascending aorta, and the pulmonary trunks as they're leaving the heart. We also have veins in the middle mediastinum, and these are the superior and inferior vena cava, which are going to terminate at the right atria, as well as the pulmonary veins that will terminate in the left, um, left atria. We also have the phrenic nerve around the heart, so it becomes a content of the middle mediastinum. So pericardium and the heart, ascending aorta and pulmonary trunks superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and pulmonary vein. So basically, vessels that drain into the heart and vessels that carry blood away from the heart. Then you have the phrenic nerve and lymph nodes as part of the middle mediastinum. So you can appreciate that's the middle mediastinum with the heart. So you have the ascending outer and its branches, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries. Those will form components of the middle mediastinum. So we remember superior vena cava is formed by brachiocephalic vein. Brachiocephalic veins are in the superior mediastinum. You have a right and left brachiocephalic vein, and they will unite and form the superior vena cava. 
So what's the origin of brachiocephalic vein? Internal jugular vein and subclavian vein, they unite behind the medial end of the clavicle to form brachiocephalic vein. So brachiocephalic vein is formed by the union of internal jugular vein and subclavian vein behind the medial end of the clavicle. Termination of brachiocephalic vein, the right and the left will unite to form the superior vena cava that empties into the right atrium of the heart. Superior vena cava is seen in the superior and middle mediastinum, and the origin is by union of the right and left brachiocephalic vein and terminates at the right atrium of the heart. The main tributary of the superior vena cava is the azygous vein. So this is the azygous vein. You need to learn the azygous system because you should be able to explain how the azygous and the hemiazygous veins are formed. So the azygous and hemiazygous veins, as you can see here, This is the right brachiocephalic and the left brachiocephalic trunk. Together they form superior vena cava, but you have the azygous vein coming as a tributary of the superior vena cava. So azygous vein is on the right side. Hemiazygous system is usually on the left side. So we have inferior hemiazygous and superior hemiazygous. These are intercostal veins, okay, in between the ribs. So the fourth to eleventh intercostal veins will form the azygous and just close to its emptying into superior vena cava, the second and the third unite and empty into the azygous vein. So that's what forms azygous vein. Meanwhile, the hemiazygous on the left side, you have the fourth to eighth intercostal veins will form superior hemiazygous, while ninth to eleventh intercostal vessels will form inferior hemiazygous. So the two superior and inferior hemiazygous drain into the azygous vein. Remember, the first intercostal veins drain into the brachiocephalic trunk on the right and left side. The second and the third on the right drain into a zygous, while the second and the third on the left unite to drain into the left brachiocephalic vein. So again, that's just what we have said, that you have um, intercostal vessels, the first one's draining into the brachiocephalic veins, second and third joining on the right side, they drain into azygous, while on the left into left brachiocephalic. Right and left brachiocephalic join to form superior vena cava, and the main tributary of superior vena cava is the azygous vein. Azygous vein has tributaries from the fourth to eleventh intercostal veins, and before its termination, you have second and third intercostals on the right joining it. The another tributary of the azygous, you have the superior and inferior hemiazygous. Superior hemiazygous is formed by the union of by the four, uh, fourth to eighth intercostal vessels draining into it, while inferior hemiazygous has tributaries from the ninth to eleventh um, intercostal veins. So the azygous vein is located in the posterior mediastinum. What's the origin of azygous vein? You have right ascending lumbar vein and subcostal vein. Together, they join to form the azygous vein. The right ascending lumbar and the subcostal vein, they join to form the azygous vein. And this usually passes through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. What's the termination of azygous vein? It forms an arc above the root of the right lung and empty into the superior vena cava. And this occurs at the lower border of T4. So it occurs at that plane that divides the uh, mediastinum into superior and inferior from the sternal angle of Louis and T4 T5 junction. So azygous terminates at the plane, uh, uh, sternal angle of Louis by. Um, emptying into the superior vena cover. What are the relations of the azygous vein? Anteriorly is the esophagus. Posterior to the azygous, you find the thoracic vertebra. Onto its right, you find the right pleura and lung, while onto the left of the azygous, you find the thoracic duct. The tributaries of the azygous include superior and inferior hemiazygous veins, the right superior intercostal vein, the right posterior intercostal veins, which are fourth to eleven, and the right bronchial veins as well as esophageal and pericardial veins. So those are the tributaries. Superior and inferior hemizygous, right bronchial veins, esophageal veins, pericardial veins, as well as right posterior intercostal veins, 4 to 11. Inferior hemizygous is also in the posterior mediastinum, formed by the union of left ascending lumbar and the subcostal veins, and usually passes through the left cruise of the diaphragm. It terminates at the azygous vein opposite T8, and the main tributaries include left posterior intercostal vein and esophageal veins.